वेलकम बैक नाउ इन दिस सेशन वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन्स फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग वी आर बीन हियरिंग दैट व्हाट आर प्रोटीन्स प्रोटीन्स आर नथिंग बट पॉलीमर्स ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स सो व्हाट पॉलीमर्स टू बी मोर स्पेसिफिक दे आर पॉलीमर्स ऑफ एल अमाइनो एसिड्स दे आर पॉलीमर्स ऑफ एल अल्फा अमाइनो एसिड्स वी नो दैट okay now this proteins this uh, we know that the amino acids the number of amino acids are around 20 in number and these are the standard amino acids and these are the ones which are organized in different ways to form the umpteen number of proteins that are present in the body having different functions having different structures having different co- uh, composition now these proteins are having different levels of organization just as the way an alphabet can form a word a word can form a chapter sentence sentences can form chapters similarly in proteins we have four levels of organization i have it here the primary structure the secondary structure the tertiary structure and the quaternary structure now with this we'll first start with the primary structure what do i mean when i say the word primary structure primary structure refers to the number and sequence of amino acids so the number could be or how many amino acids are present in a protein a protein may contain 50 amino acid another protein may contain 100 amino acids so the number may vary other thing is there may be proteins with the same number of amino acids but the sequence of amino acids may be different and that is why it leads to a different protein now what determines the sequence of amino acids the sequence of the amino acids is determined by the genes or the genetic code or during transcription it is what det- determines what in what sequence which amino acid is going to be present in the primary structure of the protein and remember it is the primary structure which is going to determine the higher levels of organization now let me give an example suppose there are four amino no acids i'm just giving some example there are four amino acids these four amino acids can be arranged for the number is the same but the sequence can change so imagine if i put it in a particular sequence look at the word that is formed each time i change the sequence a different a different protein can be formed so everywhere i can keep on changing the sequence the same number of amino acids sequence changes it results in the formation of a different protein i can have look with only four amino acids i can get so many so many options so many different ways these can be arranged and it can lead to a different number of different number of amino acids so similarly in the body the number is one thing of amino acid the sequence of amino acid is another thing now it is the sequence the sequence which determines the function remember just as the way this function has different from this function why is it different it is because the sequence is different similarly in the body the each amino acid sequence will determine not only the higher levels of organization but also the function of the protein or the biological activity the activity changes as the sequence changes it is a different protein with a different function that is the importance of the primary structure now in all this we have the numbering of the primary structure in the numbering of this the amino terminal as i said before how polypeptides are n- numbered in the same way in the proteins all the amino acids are numbered so if you have a, a series of amino acids which are forming a protein then the all the amino acids all the proteins the first amino acid is considered to be the amino terminal will be the first amino acids and the carboxy terminal will be the last amino acid this is by convention and it is always formed and the number of amino acids will always be in the amino terminal to the carboxy terminal they are always written in the same manner it is by convention 
and this is what will be followed by everywhere all over the world the carboxy terminal is the last amino acid now which are the bonds which stabilize a primary structure so what is this bond between two amino acids it is a peptide bond so it is the peptide bond which stabilizes the protein structure as i said the protein uh, primary structure is the number of amino acid and the sequence of amino acid and this sequence is determined by the genes and it is stabilized by the presence of peptide bonds this bond what type of bond is a peptide bond it is a covalent bond always remember that so further features of the peptide bond let me tell you here the peptide bond is rigid and planar it has a partial double bond character the con or the cn bond is trans in nature there is no freedom of rotation the distance is 1.3 to armstrong the side chains are free to rotate on either side of the peptide bond the angles of rotation are called as the ramachandran angles and that is what determines the spatial orientation of the peptide in a particular space that is what is uh, the primary structure of proteins now we go ahead to the secondary structure of proteins what are the different types of secondary structure how they are uh, how they happen what do you mean by a secondary structure secondary structure determines the configurational relationship between amino acids that are just 3 to 4 distance away maybe one to first amino acid to the third first amino acid to the second or the fourth it goes on like that nearby amino acid the relationship between nearby amino acids is determined is known as the secondary structure in the linear sequence now the bonds which stabilize the secondary structure are, are the non covalent bonds i'll talk a bit about the bonds and then i will talk further about the different secondary structure now the bonds that are present include the hydrogen bond the electrostatic bonds the hydrophobic interactions and the van der waals forces now out of all this i'll be talking bit more about what are they and in the secondary structure two types frequently occur in protein and those are called as the alpha helix and the beta sheet now to go further about the different non covalent bonds the hydrogen bonds hydrogen bonds as everybody knows they are just between two uh, electrons now the electrostatic bonds are very important the the ionic bonds which are happen between the positive charges the epsilon amino of lysine guanidine group of arginine imidazole of histidine histidine arginine and lysine which are positive charges with the negative charges the carboxyl groups of aspartic acid and glutamic acid that results in the formation of ionic bonds the hydrophobic bonds are because of the clustering of the non polar groups and the van der waal forces are transient weak electrical attraction of one atom for another and though it is very weak force that is there but collectively it contributes maximum to the protein structure now we'll go on to the further secondary structure of the proteins the first important one among it is the alpha helix now alpha helix is a very common and a stable structure as i said the alpha helix is because when the amino acids form a helix this is possible because of hydrogen bonding here everywhere wherever there is a chance of forming a hydrogen bond hydrogen bonds are formed and this results in the formation of the polypeptide chain folds over itself to form a helix we call it the alpha helix it is a spiral it is coiled and it is right handed the peptide bond forms the backbone and the side chain extend outwards if we look at it most of the time the side chains will be outside and they will be outside the helix they will be extending out and the peptide bond now each turn there are certain things that have to be knowing about the proteins uh, about this alpha helix each turn contains 3.6 re residues it is stabilized by hydrogen bonds and the hydrogen bonds are formed between the h of the peptide bond nitrogen and o of the peptide bond 
carbon. All the peptide bond except the first and the last participate in hydrogen bonding. This is an important feature of alpha helix. We go on with more about uh, something more about alpha helix. The amino acids that destabilize alpha helix. This is what may be asked in the entrance exams. The amino acids that destabilize alpha helix include proline. Why? Because it is bulky. It is amino acid. Glycine, why? Because it is very small and large number of acidic or basic. Why? Because they form ionic bonds between themselves. If they are only acidic, they repel each other. If they are only basic, they repel each other. And if there is a combination of acidic or basic, they will form different bonds and will not allow hydrogen bonding to take place. They will allow only ionic bonds to take place. Hence, these all amino acids can destabilize a alpha helix. Now, which are the proteins which have alpha helical structure? One important is alpha keratin, which is present in hair, nail, skin, you all know about it. Myosin, tropomyosin, which is present in muscle. Fibrin, which is present in blood. Hemoglobin, RBC, all these have alpha helices. Very common, myoglobin also has alpha helices, which is present in muscle. Now, there is one important thing which can be asked in MCQ, the protein which does not have an alpha helical structure and that is chymotrypsin. Now, we go on to another type which is commonly secondary structure which is commonly seen in proteins and that is the beta pleated sheet. What do you mean by a beta pleated sheet? What does the word pleat mean to you? Pleat means it folds over itself and that is known as a pleat. Now, extended stretches of five or more amino acids are called as beta strands. So, they are, instead of like this, if there are extended stretches of five or more amino acids, you call it a beta strand. Now, beta strands which are organized next to each other, if there are many beta strands which are organized next to each other, what does it become? It becomes a beta sheet. A beta sheet which is organized next to each other. Beta strands next to each other form a beta sheet. They are pleated. Okay. Now the beta surface of the beta sheet appears pleated. The polypeptide chain is fully extended in this case and the distance between, I will show you in the example, the distance between adjacent amino acids is 3.5 Armstrongs. This is also stabilized by hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds may be intra-chain or interchain. So if there are many beta sheets, the hydrogen bonds may be with, within two or three sheets or within the within the beta strands itself. We call it the intra-chain or interchain. If the adjacent strands are oriented in the same direction, it is called as a parallel beta sheet. If the adjacent strands run in opposite direction, you call it an anti-parallel beta sheet and there can also be mixed beta sheets. Basically, they are usually shown as an arrow, a double-stranded arrow to show the direction in which these beta sheets are arranged. So, if it is like this, they all, the polypeptide chains are in a particular direction. If they are in the same direction, you call it parallel. If they are in the opposite direction, you call it anti-parallel. It is simple in this. This is a beta sheet. This is another beta sheet, both of which are anti-parallel in nature or they could be parallel also when they are arranged in the same direction or they can be mixed also. Furthermore, we have certain things about beta pleated sheets. Which are the proteins which have beta pleated sheets? We have silk protein, fibroin, which is there, flavodoxin has beta pleated sheets, carbonic anhydrase has a lot of beta pleated sheets. Now, important beta pleated sheet is a amyloid protein. Why do I say it is important? Because it accumulates in a disease called as amyloidosis and in Alzheimer's. You will be learning more about this as you go in, a, in later sections. Now, these are the important beta pleated sheets. Now, as I said, the secondary structure, it, it determines the orientation of amino acid, two or three amino acids away and it can be alpha helical or beta pleated sheets. Now, we go on to the next level of organization and that is 
the non repetitive secondary structure the secondary structure also has certain non repetitive we call it the beta bends beta turns or the hairpin loops or the omega loop or a super secondary structure can also be formed but all those are not that important there is what is called as a creaky conformation etc we'll go to the next level that is the tertiary structure of proteins the tertiary structure denotes the three dimensional shape of a protein what do you mean by three dimensional you have the extended alpha helices you have the beta pleated shape all of them can come together and they can denote form a 3d structure now this three dimensional structure is what is is called as the tertiary structure it determines the shape of the protein tertiary structure results because the alpha helices and the beta pleated sheets have come together for they are folded together the tertiary structure is stabilized by the non covalent hydrophobic electrostatic van der waal and i but more importantly it has one more important covalent bond which stabilizes the tertiary structure and that is the disulfide bond thermodynamically the tertiary structure is very stable and it is responsible for domains now you might have heard of different proteins having different domains now if you look at an enzyme the enzyme or a immunoglobulin in for example an immunoglobulin may have different domains each domain may be responsible for different function one domain may be responsible for the binding of antigen another may be for binding to another site so a protein can have different domains so all these alpha helices the beta pleated sheet all of them come together and result in the formation of a globular protein or a fibrous protein and this is the tertiary structure domains are usually the compact globular units that are connected by a flexible segment of polypeptide and each domain contributes to a specific function of the overall protein now this is regarding the tertiary structure we go ahead to one more level of organization and that is the quaternary structure how is the quaternary structure got about the quaternary structure is seen only and only in proteins which have more than one polypeptide chain if it is having one polypeptide chain you do not see a quaternary structure so most important thing is a protein should have more than one polypeptide chain now monomeric proteins have single polypeptide chain and do not have quaternary structure polymeric or oligomeric proteins have a uh, quaternary structure each polypeptide chain is then called as a subunit homopolymeric means the subunits are identical heteropolymeric means the subunits are not similar so all the covalent bonds the disulfide bonds all the non covalent bonds are the ones which stabilize the protein structure hemoglobin has a quaternary structure immunoglobulins have a quaternary structure now to briefly summarize the primary structure denotes the number of amino acids and the sequence of amino acids this primary structure can form the secondary structure it can be in the form of a alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet or a combination of the both this alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet can come together can be folded still more and it results in the formation of a compact globular molecule which has a bit of a beta pleated sheet or alpha helices they all come together now when many such come together if one more of it joins to it it becomes it becomes the quaternary structure with many different polypeptides joining together held by covalent or the non covalent bonds it results in the quaternary this is the primary this is the secondary this is the tertiary and this is the quaternary structure remember quaternary structure is there only for oligomeric proteins now i'll go ahead with how to this fold and form this 
how come an amino acid which is stretching has formed this so in our body we call this as protein folding now it is the primary structure which determines the three dimensional shape of a protein some proteins require help of other proteins which help the protein to fold over itself to form this globular protein and these are called as chaperons chaperons or chaperones and there are different type of chaperones that are present in the body some chaperonins are called, they are called as chaperonins or heat shock proteins the folding of proteins is a energy requiring process this is how proteins are folded i'll talk a bit about what is denaturation this is something related to the proteins denaturation is a loss of secondary tertiary and quaternary structure the primary structure is intact but the secondary tertiary and quaternary structures are lost the why is that lost when which are the bonds that are destroyed all the non covalent bonds are destroyed ionic hydrogen hydrophobic but the peptide bond is not cleaved if the peptide bond is cleaved it is not denaturation it is hydrolysis of the protein denaturation leads to unfolding of the coils natural coils loss of biological activity decrease in solubility increase in persistibility loss of antigenic properties increased digestibility and that is important and there are different denaturing agents like physical chemical mechanical uv rays ionizing radiation cooking heating anything you take can denature proteins so what's the significance denaturation increases the digestibility of proteins in stomach denaturation is done by hydrochloric acid deproteinization of blood is done for analysis by denaturation so that brings me to the end of structure of proteins we'll go ahead with the different functional classifications of your proteins in the next session thank you